Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers. Thanks for joining us here. We're going to have some good old outboard fun. For sure. Um, this video, um, we're going to start a new victim. It's a little cutie. It's a little cutie outboard, um, and I own it, and, uh, I don't think it's going to need much. I think that, uh, a carb cleaning is about it, um, and it's, it's a two-stroke, very simple carb. I will show you the little cutie in a moment. Um... And then I'm working on the 25 for a friend of mine. Um, and like I said, I had to change up some plans on that. And I'll show you a little bit of that and why. And uh, you'll see what, what I found with that along the way. And I've got a... Uh, a boat I'm going to show you that's right here at my house uh, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit of the story behind that and don't know what else we'll get to because as you know you never ever ever ever, ever know what's going to show up at this little shop so I say let's get to it Spider webs all over this thing. Too bad inside.
get on to the facts check. I uh, took my air compressor and blew the power head off and got as much of the flaky old paint and stuff out of there as I could. Alright, so I've got both top and bottom cylinders hooked up to the coil wires. I got a glove here so I don't get any grounding, arcing on the pan there. Should be these top two right here. Spin her over with the half. We got good hot Sparky on two. Alright, I hooked up the battery and uh, I pushed the start button and I'm not getting anything. But when I jump the solenoid, um, I can get it to turn over with the electric starter. So the solenoid or the switch is probably bad. But I went ahead and hooked up my compression gauge. Hopefully you can see that in there. I'm on the bottom cylinder. We're on zero. So, and then I got my remote switch just jumping the solenoid. That's good enough for a compressionist check. See what we get. What we get? What we get? Ooh, look at there. 120 even. And I have shot nothing into these cylinders. So we got 120 on the bottom. So that's good, that's good. I like 120. Let's look at this top cylinder. Come on. Who can do it? Uh. Let me get off this glove because the uh, Schrader valve keeps hanging on the glove and I can't screw in the compression gauge. There we go. Take that glove off and I can do it perfectly. Alright, we're on the top cylinder. We are on zero. Let's see what we get. That should be good. We got about Oh, 115-ish, a little over 115, about 117 probably. 117, 120, that's good. Those numbers should run a motor. We got good spark. We got good compressionis. Um, we have a solenoid or starter switch issue. But, I think I'm going to put it in the tank. Let me get set up and I'll be right back. Alrighty. Um, let me give her a little squirt of trifo down the throat. Squeeze that bulb. The primer does not seem to be working right now. I got the gas hooked up. Battery hooked up. And then I got my jumper here. Let's see if we get anything. I can control a little bit of the throttle right now. Woo! Got to turn on the sucker.
the crawlies up. See if I see any come climbing out. There's no gear shift on that. Um, this plastic part up under here was all broke. But since I'm changing out the uh, the whole transom bracket anyway to make it a tiller, that won't be a problem. Yeah, I, I noticed that when I went to put it in neutral, this thing was just all flopping around. It's broke under here. Um, the kill switch don't work. The start switch don't work. Um, there is no tilt mechanism on this thing at all. It, there's a Right there, I think, is where it would have been. There's just the bolt. So, um, as good as this power head is and all, it's a good thing I'm doing what I'm doing to it um, because it, it's going to need all that stuff replaced anyway. So a friend of mine passed away, and I kept this boat pretty much running for him and, and his trolling motor, and I just took those downriggers you saw off. Um, they work just fine, and I, I've taken a couple of other things off the boat. But I'm going to 
basically give the boat to another friend. Um, I've had a lot of good memories in this boat. Um, the, the fella, a dear friend of mine who passed away, was one of the better king salmon fishermen I, I knew uh, when it came to uh, trolling and so forth. He was really good at it. But a friend of mine wants the boat. I'm going to keep the trailer and put my welded skiff on it because I think this trailer is a little better than the one I got. Well, it will be when I get done with it. But uh, I, he had that jack plate made there. And we were in the process. His lower unit froze. Uh, got water in it and then froze and cracked. So we were in the pro uh, process of putting a new lower unit on it. And then he got sick and passed away. So um, that jack plate there is all stainless steel. And the fellow I'm giving the boat to has two Johnson 130s uh, that run. So he's going to put one of them on there and then use the other, you know, just keep the other one as his backup. But I took the downriggers. And uh, that's the story on this boat. I had many a good day out there on the water uh, fishing with my friend. He will be missed. Hopefully my other friend will continue on with this boat and put it to good use. Okay, I'm doing... Like I said, I'll be working on this 25 for a friend here and there. But anyway, that's the shifter for it, what's left of it. And, uh, well, you get the picture. It's supposed to be like that ish. And it's broke. So I went looking in the bone pile and I didn't see one of them, but I saw this one. This is off a 55 commercial, I believe. And I was like, well, if I just get rid of that, then I might need to use some spacers or whatever, but it should do the same thing as that one. We'll see. All right, let's get rid of that part. Diablo! clean it up just a little bit more on the side of my bench grinding wheel. There's one piece of the old one off. And the top part of the old one. That's where we got 
out there a couple washers. Leave that washer off. Now, we got this, and it had a spacer in it, which I think is about the right size. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. See, we're going to have to grind more of that so I can get it to line up. It's almost lined up, but I'm going to need to grind a little more off of that. Let's see if I put it up there. Yeah, I'm going to have to grind it. Or, you know what, I could cut this off even. It would still be bolted under the underside. I think I'll do that. I think I'll do that with Diablo. Get rid of a little bit of aluminum. Yeah, let's try that. I think it'll work. It's still good and strong. You got all this. And then I'll just cut this piece here. That's all what are we going to do. Move my little garden hose so I don't ruin it. Still pretty thick right in there. Let me cut some more. Cut some more. She gone. Gone. Oh yeah. I think we're gonna get it now. I might have to add some more spacers. 
make sure. There we go. All right, so that's good. I'm, or just get a smaller, shorter bolt. Because this is going to be, I don't know how deep that thing goes in. Let me, let me check that out. With the zip gun. No, that should be good. And then I forgot, I got some other washers and spacers and such that I got to put on this thing. Yeah, I forgot all about them, so let's see. I've got spacers and washers and things, oh my. So I think that one goes to the inside. So, before I bolt this up, I'm noticing that that actual ship rod hole looks bigger, so I might have to drill that out. I don't know if that... Yeah, that one. And that one. And through there, and that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, then I can still drill a hole there, I think, if I need to. Or drill it out. Before I do, let's just see. I should have put that on first, huh? I still think it'll make it. Let me loosen things back up. That is totally acceptable. Totally acceptable. There's what we had. There's what we got. Yeah. I don't mind a little custom when the actual custom is an upgrade. You understand? Sorry about all these trucks, these big dump trucks. They're building a house up there. So, yeah. This is beefier, bigger, heavier. Isn't that neat? They even show a little arrow on which way goes up for this little cutie bonnet. I think that's pretty cool. You know, takes that guess on work out, you know, you know. One last thing. Yeah. Try to get it back in there. We go. Get in there. I got to spray some paint in the inside of this too. Because there was some flaking going on there just to, there we go. To glue it down, you know. But, 
There's what I came up with for the Suzuki bonnet. Um, you know, you just kind of have to work with what you got. And most of it was peeling off, but I was able to save that. And so I went with the white. And uh, so now I've got to spray the inside of it. I had some, I don't know, because the inside ain't painted, but I don't know where, it, maybe I don't need to paint it. It's, it looks like it blew all out of there, so. Oh, I'll spray a little in there anyway. But that's what I came out with. It looks pretty good on the motor. So, uh oh. This right here says white. So I'm just going to spray a little on the inside there to kind of stick anything down and around and down and that looks a little better than that what it did anyway so just using this kind of as an adhesive there is some somebody it was painted inside now that i'm spraying the paint in there i can see the the edges of the flaking i'll show you i'll show you you'll be able to see it too And this looks, it makes it look a little nicer in there anyway, for a little while. That wind's blowing that right over toward my camera. So, I'll move you over here because I don't want to paint up the lens. This ain't the paint, best paint job I've done because there's some, I'll touch it up though. There's some scaling or whatever you call it, orange peeling. But if you look right at the top up here, you can see that where that paint was kind of peeling there. That's what I'm trying to glue down. I don't want that getting into my carburetor. There. And there. So I'll let that dry. Yeah. And then... Uh, there's a little bit of orange peeling right there. I'll hit it with some sandpaper and repaint that. It looks nice. So, let's go over here. Here's the little cutie. And I think all we're going to really look, I mean, I washed it, you know, with the hose, so. I still got some white powdery here. I, I, when, I, when I get it running, I'll use my wire brush on that, clean that up. Still some yuck in there that didn't blast out with all... I can blast it out of there with air, so... It cleaned up pretty good, though. And the carburetor, so simple. Look at that cute little carby on that little cutie. So... Let me get some tools and we'll get that old garbage radar off there. Alrighty, I put that carburetor back on there. Alrighty, squeeze it at bulb. Looks like some gas is going in. Pull that choke. Alright, we're in neutral. I don't know. Alright, you're gonna see what I'm gonna see. Ooh, look at that. A lot of powdery stuff. Part two is a coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.